venous thrombosis in children thrombosis is the formation of blood clot known as thrombus within a blood vessel virtual stride or the tried of virtual describes three broad categories of factors that are those to contribute to thrombus it is named after the renowned german physician Rudolf virchow those triads are altered blood flow endothelial injury and hypercoagulability we classify risk factors for thrombus into four those are general inherited causes anatomic factors and the medications from the general one indwelling catheter infection trauma surgery malignancy mobility and other causes can be mentioned from inherited thrombophilia factor 5 lesion mutation prothrombin mutation antithrombin deficiency protein c and s deficiency homocystinuria elevator factor 8 and dysfibrinogenemia can be mentioned there others are anatomic and the medications medications like estrogen containing contraceptives asparaginous heparin or heparin induced thrombocytopenia corticosteroids and anatomic causes such as thoracic outlet obstruction iliac vein compression syndrome and absence of inferior vena cava can be uh, mentioned let us see the clinical manifestation based on the location of formation of thrombus the first one is extremity or deep vein thrombosis children with acute dvt often present with extremity pain swelling and discoloration as you see on the image if pulmonary embolism happens symptoms of pulmonary embolism includes shortness of breath pleuritic chest pain cough hemoptysis fever and in the case of massive pulmonary embolism hypotension and the right side heart failure can be seen the second one is cerebral sign of venous thrombosis symptoms might be subtle and they may develop over many hours or days in this case neonates with cerebral sign of venous thrombosis often present with seizures whereas older children often complain of headache vomiting seizure and the focal signs they may also have papilledema and abducens pulsing older patients may have concurrent sinusitis or mastoiditis that has contributed to the thrombosis the other is renal vein thrombosis renal vein thrombosis is the most common spontaneous venous thrombus in neonates affected infants may present with hematuria abdominal mass or flank mass and thrombocytopenia so sudden onset of hematuria flank mass and thrombocytopenia is high likely due to renal venous thrombosis in neonates infants of diabetic mothers are at risk for renal venous thrombosis although the mechanism for increased risk is unknown approximately 25% of cases are bilateral regarding diagnosis ultrasound with doppler flow is the most commonly employed imaging study for the diagnosis of extremity venous thrombus spiral ct is used most frequently for the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism for the diagnosis of cerebral sign of venous thrombosis and acute ischemic stroke the most sensitive imaging study is brain mri with venography or diffusion weight imaging on laboratory all children with venous thrombus should have cbc and baseline coagulation profile pt ptt and dinr to assess their coagulation status testing for antiphospholipid syndrome includes evaluation for the lupus anticoagulant as well as anticardiolipin and anti beta 2 glycoprotein antibodies this is done in patients with inflammatory disorders or those who present with thrombosis and no other obvious risk factors identification of inherited thrombophilia may influence the duration of treatment because if it is an inherited disorder the duration of treatment can be lifelong on treatment therapeutic options for children with thrombosis include anticoagulation thrombolysis and surgery anticoagulation prevents the formation of new thrombosis whereas thrombolysis causes breakdown of already formed thrombus the goal of anticoagulation is to reduce the risk of embolism halt clot extension and prevent recurrence the optimal duration of anticoagulation for children with thrombus includes for neonates from 6 weeks to 3 months for older children 3 to 6 months of therapy but if it is inherited problem it can be lifelong 
Patients with strong inherited thrombophilia, recurrent thrombosis, and antiphospholipid antibody syndrome may require indefinite anticoagulation. Systemic or endovascular thrombolysis might be indicated for organ or limb threatening thrombosis. Surgery may be necessary for life or limb threatening thrombosis when there is a contraindication to thrombolysis. Complications of venous thrombus include recurrent thrombosis and the development of post-thrombotic post syndrome. A thrombus blood vessel may partially or fully recanalize or remain occluded. Over time, an occluded deep vein may cause venous hypertension, resulting in blood flow being directed from the deep system into superficial veins and potentially producing pain, swelling, edema, discoloration, and ulceration. This clinical picture is known as post-thrombotic syndrome and they might be chronically disabling. The likelihood of developing post-thrombotic syndrome is highest in the first two years of life but continues to increase over time. This is all what I have. Thank you for watching and also for subscribing to the channel.